Yeah, what happened yesterday? Well, I think some people ran a race. We spent eight hours watching a race. What race, <laughs> was, what race was that? <laughs> the Ironman World Championships held in Kona. October All right. 14th. So, welcome to the Tri Life, and we are going to give you the results. Today is the Tri Life results show for Kona 2017 Tri Ironman Triathlon World Championships. And you know, the races were completely different for both men and women. And, you know, as always, you got to be on your, on your best. On your A game. So, and sometimes you're not, even though you've put everything forward towards Kona. Yeah. So, um, let's just uh, go over the guys who didn't make the podium that we talked about uh, in our last episode. So Jan Ferdinand, who was the number one uh, ranked tri Ironman triathlete in the world and was the two-time defending champion. He ended up finishing 35th with an overall time of 9.15.44. Did you have anyone that... Did any of your people not finish in the top five? One. But clearly, I did better research. <laughs> clearly. Uh, no, four of my top five that I talked about in the previous video, in the preview video, did actually finish in the top five, so I feel really good about that. Some of the people I mentioned uh, did not. However, Rod, yeah, for Daniel, if you're watching him, major respect to him because he was injured and he still finished, and he, just, he was obviously in pain, he was clutching his back. Um, he regrouped, knew he wasn't going to win, and then he finished strong uh, at that point with some of the age groupers, and um, it, he's just a class act, so um, he said so, he'll be back, he said it hurt, but... So we'll talk about the race, day. we'll talk about that, but who was your, who was the one that you thought was going to make it that didn't make it? Well, I thought... That Rachel Joyce was going to make it in the top five. Uh, she is, has been in the top five at Kona pretty consistently the past couple of years. She ended up finishing 20th, um, just, you know, not as fast on her day. Uh, I think we talked about in the preview that Kona wasn't initially on the radar for 2017 for her because she had recently given birth this time last year and was kind of making her way back. Um, she's in all the preview stuff, she said she was ready to go. She ended up finishing 20th with a 53-minute swim, a 5-minute and 7, or 5-hour and 7-minute bike, and a 3-hour and 36-minute run. So maybe just a little slower than she usually is, but still one of the best pros in the world. So I had a bunch of dudes that, you know, didn't hit the podium. So let's get into it. Uh... Number three ranked in the world at the time was Ben Hoffman, the United States. He ends up finishing ninth uh, with an 8-19-26. Pretty good time for Kona. You know, that's nothing like... That's pretty good. <laughs> but uh, he, he knew going into it that it would have to be his best race. And I don't think necessarily that was his best race. It was probably one of his top five races of all time, though. And reality is that sometimes when you... Kona is, it's a tough course, and, like, the course itself, in perfect weather, is really tough, but then you bring in the other factors, you know, in October, in Hawaii, it's still pretty warm, like, it's warm most of the year anyways, but it's still really warm, it's still summer, it's still humid, so... The course by itself is unforgiving, and then you add those factors in, and it's unforgiving. So, the next guy, who I really thought, he was, man, um, since his, his wife, Renny Carfrey, uh, gave birth uh, and was pregnant for most of the training season, he was really focused, honed in. Tim O'Donnell, United States, he ends up getting 19th, 8.33.53. Still a pretty good time, but, you know, we both thought that it was just him. Like everything was just him. 
this year because, you know, Rennie got to, like, be an extra coach for him uh, while also being, uh, you know, full-time mom. So, but... But sometimes the best laid plans, you know. Best laid plans, you know. Trend, but it's not he, okay. he just didn't have his best day. Um, and eighth in the world, uh, Tim Don. Sorry, man. Uh, Tim had a, did, a do not start. If you follow him on Instagram, you'll know that uh, on a training ride, uh, he got hit and he fractured two vertebrae in his neck. Uh, fortunately, no, neither of those vertebrae require surgery, so he'll be in rehab and in a neck brace for a while, and he'll be back. You know, we're talking about the guy who set the Ironman world record this year, and you know, if he was the guy this year, he'd have been the oldest person to uh, win Kona. Yeah, so great for him. Quick PSA: If you're driving, your friends and family drive. Share the road with cyclists. Don't hit cyclists like that. Just oh, and if you break. honk at them, they don't know what you're saying. All right. Mm -hmm. B. Don't roll down your window and yell f off. Because that happened to me a couple weeks ago. Because what? the law says you gotta share the road. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and the last guy who I thought was a real dark horse but had a good year was. Tim Reed, uh, he ends up finishing 23rd with an 840-11. He was doing really well uh, on the bike for a while. He was in second place. He ends up getting flat, changes out his wheel, and he's still in second place for a while, uh, but the boys uh, catch up to him, and, you know, it just didn't work out for him uh, yesterday. So let's get into... Uh, the race. So, how did uh, how did the the women come off the swim for you? Well, the women had a pretty fast swim. Um, Lucy Charles, who is we talked about her before. She is a former Olympic caliber open water swimmer um, in Great Britain. I said in the last video she was twenty three. She's twenty four. Um, she missed setting a Kona swim course record by five seconds. She was blazing fast out of the water um, for, what was it, 48 minutes and 48 seconds. Um, right on her heels was Lauren Brandon. She's an American. She, Lauren Brandon is a really incredible swimmer. She's usually right at the very front of the pack on the swims. And then um, the third swimmer, Haley is a Chura, she was 52 minutes. So it's obvious that Lucy and Lauren were way ahead of the pack and then everyone came in after uh, it hit the 50 minute mark. So that is how the swim broke down. So swim broke down, top three for the men. Josh Amberger, man, he was out there in front pretty much the entire time, but you know, we finished the swim on his heels coming out. Uh, Jan Fernando, you know, number one in the world. He's an extremely strong swimmer. He was right there. And then a guy, you know, who finishes way out, uh, who's a strong swimmer, was Nicholas Castelline, who's from Australia. And, you know, if you're watching live, you're wondering, man, does this guy have a shot? Because he's not, no one pegged him for much. Like, we all knew he was a strong swimmer, but he kind of dies on the bike and run, which sort of happened. But, you know, Kona's swim course isn't exactly easy because it's pretty choppy. Throughout most of it, yesterday it was really... Uh, nice, uh, from what I understood, but still, you know, when you can set yourself up like that, coming third out of the water, you're expecting a lot. Um, so heading into uh, the bike, what happened for you? Well, for the women, uh, unlike the men's race, where there's a lot of changes on the bike, the women were pretty consistent in the top couple of women. Uh, Lucy Charles out of the water right away. Lauren Brandon, they have those couple minutes head start, like I talked about. Um, pretty quick transitions. They're on the bikes. Lucy Charles just charges straight ahead. She stayed in the front position on the bikes until the last couple kilometers, the very end of the bike, and that's when Daniela Reed made her move. Um, 
but it was Lucy Charles, Lauren Brandon right on her heels, and if you watch the footage, Lauren Brandon was just draft legal enough on Lucy Charles's heels, um, and then Daniela Reef was behind them, and then so forth. So the bike course, Daniela Reef ended up finishing first, four hours, 53 minutes and 10 seconds. Lucy Charles, four hours, 58 minutes and 19 seconds. Lauren Brandon was third, again, like, Aaron was just saying with some of the other faster swimmers, Laura Brandon ended up finishing, I believe she was 26th overall. She had a four-hour marathon, so she did slow significantly at, in the marathon, and that's um, where she ended up. But those were the top players with the bike. Women were pretty consistent, uh, mostly Lucy Charles and Lauren Brandon, and then everyone else in the chase. There was another chase pack and then a third chase pack, um, Daniela Reef made her move towards the end. She she went to, towards the front, and then she did not give up the lead. On the bike, we had an interesting bike, and Josh Hamburger, he was gunning it uh, out of tier t transition one, and you're wondering, hey, this guy's like just killed it on the swim. What's he going to do you know, on the bike? And Jan Ferdinand, you're saying, hey, he's just going to take over right now, but you end up looking at... Uh, the bike ends up not being, you know, second out of transition, and but he's still in top five out of transition. Oh, shout out to Team Socks. Shout out to all the people that wear socks. Yes. Okay. Hashtag Team Socks. When you get off the bike, you take those couple extra seconds and transition to put on a pair of socks. Make your marathon a whole lot more. So, incredible. Josh Hamburger is going out there, and then. You know, coming up pretty fast, you've got Sebastian Keenley, Lionel Sanders, and you're wondering, you know, Lionel Sanders ran a great race. So, throughout the bike, uh, it's shaping up. Uh, Jan Fernando, you know, you're thinking this guy's just going to take over, but it ends up, you probably start to see him have a bad race uh, on the bike where he, instead of, you know, sticking consistently at fourth or third and then taking over, uh, during the uh, the bike down the Queen K or whatnot, however, uh, it ends up being you know a trading of places. Sebastian Keenly was the second guy on the bike for most of the race. Uh, like I said, Tim Reed he was out there in second place early at the beginning, and he popped a tire and switched it out uh, really fast and was maintained second for a while. But towards the middle. It's, you're seeing Lionel Sanders put in work, okay? And then Sebastian Keenley's behind him, and you're thinking, uh, with the way they're pacing, Keenley's just going to catch him. Well, Keenley sort of catches <laughs> Lionel Sanders for a significant portion, but it was more or less uh, Cameron Worth comes out of third place and pushes into first place, taking over on the bike, and for most of that, uh, he basically just traded spots with Lionel Sanders, who was in third, and then coming into the finishing the bike, uh, you know, Cameron Worth hops off, and he's first, and then Lionel Sanders had already pushed past Sebastian Keenley, and then Keenley's coming in third, and at this point, Jan Fredeno has worked himself up back from like 11th, and he's fourth out of transition two, and you're thinking, oh man, this is over at this point. But about probably three or four miles in, Jan Ferdinand, like starts grabbing his back and he just stops and he tries to run a few times and he's just basically done. Uh, something happened, you know, he got injured during the, during the race. It's really hard to tell because it's a non-contact sport, but, you know, something happened that knocked him out and, you know, he uh, went to an aid station, got like, you know, got everything focused and he started running again, but it, you know, he still, he still finished, <laughs> you know, 35th overall for pro men. So that says a lot, but he came up with an injury and he, he starts got, leisurely jogging. His, and leisurely yeah. His jog leisurely is jog is fast, like my faster fast, than is my fast run. Runs, so that's, that's crazy. <laughs> and yeah. you know, he finishes 35th and with a really good time overall, but, uh, you know, that was the bike. And what about the run for the women? Um, did, you, did you mention that group of 
German cyclists and Australian cyclists that made their way up to the front? Oh, so, I mean... It's pretty entertaining. For a while, you had uh, three Australian cyclists leading the pack. I forget who. Um, Josh... Oh, it was Josh Amberger, Tim Reed, and I think Cameron Worf was the third third one. They were leading the pack on the bike. And then, you know, it all sorts of falls apart for, like, those three uh, Australians. And But you still had Cameron Worf uh, coming out uh, on top. Uh, at the end of the bike, and with I mean behind them you had Sebastian Keeley and Jan Fernando uh, with that, but that's pretty much it's kind of funny to see how it worked. I think Cameron Worth and Sebastian Keeley just pushed uh, as hard as they could go on the bike because uh, there were just so many strong marathoners behind them. So. Okay, so for the run, and I will mention, I haven't said it before, the people I did bring up in my honorable mentions, Sarah Piampiano, Michelle Vesterby, and Anya Berenik, um, all three of them did not finish, uh, looking them up today. Um, Sarah and Michelle both did the swim and the bike. Sarah uh, took her five hours and 13 minutes to finish the bike but didn't, went into transition, but then never came out. There's no stats for the run. Same with Michelle, five hours, 24 minutes on the bike, didn't do the run. Anya Baranek, uh, she started the run, but she only had a split up through like mile three, so something happened with that. Um, so those are the three honorable mentions that I had. Um, they weren't in the, the final rankings because all three of them, unfortunately, had days that took them out of the running. But speaking of running, <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. Um, the run went, <laughs> went, there wasn't a lot of movement on the run for the woman, just like with the bike, uh, Danielle Reef came off the bike with that final push on the bike, she gets on the run, she opens up, I think what was roughly a seven minute, maybe eight minute lead over Lucy Charles, Lucy Charles was firmly in second the entire marathon, there was some jostling between three, four, and five. Um, I know Heather Jackson was in, I think, third and fourth there a little bit. Sarah Crawley, Heather Jackson, and um, they had some back and forth. But other than that, uh, it finished pretty much how the run started. Um, the really only competition for, or unknown for who, how they were going to finish as they got closer to the end was um, spots three, four, five, and so on. Um, spots one and two were on lock from Daniela Reef and Lucy Charles. So how the run, you know, turns out, well, Lionel Sanders ends up passing Cameron Worth pretty fast, and then so does Keenly. But pretty soon you're looking at how this run is going, and Lionel Sanders looks hurt as hell. Like... He's running pretty fast. He's running like, he's running faster than, <laughs> he's running like a 6.30 pace the entire time on the marathon and you're wondering what the heck's going on. But you look at his form and he's just completely destroyed. But he was ahead in that, in the marathon for like 20, 20 out of 26 miles. It was wild. You thought, you would think the way Sebastian Keenly was going because his form looked, it was, he was floating the entire time. You, you were figuring that he was going to uh, catch up with uh, with Lionel Sanders. And, you know, in the back of my head, how is this guy who only trains indoors leading Kona? How is Lionel Sanders out there? There's no way. I didn't want him to win because of that, you know, but he gutted it out. He had a great race. It was amazing to watch. Uh, but, you know, so then we got Patrick Lang, and he's just running. And his suit looks interesting. So he's got two pouches in here, right? And his, I thought his, uh, his form, his form was like perfect. Mm -hmm. And he's got, uh, you know, pockets for uh, wet sponges in his suit. And he's got a water bottle here. And he's got some sneaky snacks over here. And he passes King. And you're like, what the heck? And he just keeps going. Sanders is just slowing down, struggling. And then you, then he sees him. He sees him. And we're talking about the guy, Patrick Lang, who set the marathon record last year. 
took third. Like that's taking third, setting a marathon record. That's basically your announcement here. I'm coming to Kona. I'm going to eventually, you know, take this. That was his coming out part. Well, he pulls out a snickety snack, probably about two miles out from his from his loins. From his loins. Yes. We're watching on. I was like, he wasn't paying attention, and I said, Patrick Lang just pulled a snack out of his 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 soup groin area and then it's when we realized because last year he just tucked his water bottle in his suit and so this year his uh, kit maker actually sewed some pockets in there and he was really excited about it so it's pretty funny um watching some of the preview stuff he was eating some sort of i think it was like banana bread so pretty sure he like pulled out some banana bread and he's like all right i'm gonna pass lionel sanders <laughs> yeah so he passes lionel sanders and he just crushes it and he finishes, you know, in first place. Lionel Sanders guts it out the rest of the way. And this was Lionel Sanders coming up party. He took second. Good for that Canadian. Oh my gosh, that, that was a surprise. So, rounding it out, what was your final top five? Okay, Who finished? So my, my predictions for top five were Lucy Charles, Sarah Crawley, Rachel Joyce, Heather Jackson, and Daniela Reef. Um, it ended up being, I think it's Kaza Solly. She is from Finland. She was number five. She won Ironman South Africa this year. Um, uh, apparently, according to the commentators on the live feed yesterday, she's a blazing fast marathon is what she's known for. So uh, she finished the marathon with three hours and one minute and 34 seconds. She was number five, the dark horse that I did not have on my radar, but now she's on our radar. Um, great finish for you, Kaisa. And then Heather Jackson ended up being in fourth place. She had an overall time of nine hours and two minutes, 29 seconds. Um, Sarah Crawley, who I picked to finish fourth, she finished third with an overall time of nine hours, one minute, 38 seconds. And then uh, Lucy Charles, who I just really liked coming into Kona. Um, I said in the preview that she was going to surprise a lot of people, and she did. She First out of the water, first for most of the bike, second on lockdown during the run. Um, she came in second with an overall time of 8 hours, 59 minutes, and 38 seconds. Um, just really, really solid race for Lucy Charles. I think, you know, everyone can't get over. She's 24, and she's killing this thing, and even the commentators were saying, and we were saying in our preview, triathlon at this level, um, it's more of a mature sport. And so the, the best triathletes in the world, these pro racers are all uh, mid thirties, mid thirty, early mid thirties, um, some later thirties. So for Lucy Charles to come out and say, this is my second time running Kona and I am going to finish second. Um, and I have this similar to Lauren Brandon, how she has this really awesome uh, swim strength. But then the difference is Lucy Charles is a really great biker and a really great runner as well. She doesn't let up, and I think that's really important. They haven't seen, you know, Daniela Reef is just consistent all the way around. But Lucy Charles has a specialty being an open water swimmer in her background, and then also to back that up with the bike and the run. Um, she did a really great job, and she was second. And then Daniela Reef, of course, uh, she, she came in first. Eight hours, 50 minutes, 47 seconds. The talk, because it was obvious that she was going to finish first, the talk was, is she going to set a new course record? Um, when she finished, she said that it was the hardest she's had to work. Uh, this was a, her third time in a row winning Kona National Championship. She said it was the hardest she's had to work, um, the worst she felt, and the most it meant because of all those things. So good job to Daniela. A three-peat is pretty incredible on a race like this and a stage like this and against competition like this so um when you have someone that's that good it's easy to predict that she's gonna win and then because she's that good she backs it up so um, i picked her to win first she actually was first congratulations Daniela. so my top five going into this looks like jan Frodeno, sebastian keenly i thought timothy o'donnell was gonna have a great race take third patrick lang with fourth and Ben Hoffman rounding it out, taking fifth. Well, that looked nothing like that. Okay, so what? It, the only one to hit the podium uh, was none of them. But let's get into it. Or not none of them. Whoops. 
So the guy who I thought was going to finish fourth, because and here's the reason why. Uh, Patrick Lang didn't really have a long uh, season this last year. He was injured early part of the year, and we thought, uh, you know, it didn't. It was really hard to know what his fitness level was going to be. Um, however, what did he do? He set a new course record. 801.40. Wild. Um, number two, uh, second place on the podium was Lionel Sanders, 804.07. David McNamee, Great Britain, 807.11 for third. And then rounding out the top five, Sebastian Keenley, 809.59. And then number five is James Kunama, Republic of South Africa, 811.24. And, you know, everyone's race is different. Everyone's triathlon is different. And Kona, especially, is one of those uh, races that you have to be, like, everything has to be perfect that day. Otherwise, you're just not going to perform. And what we saw was, you know, a younger triathlete in Patrick Lang and Lionel Sanders, they had their perfect days and you know uh with the women's race you had i mean lucy charles like talk about a young person coming up and putting you know planting their flag and saying i'm here to stay two years ago she was the overall age group world champion and then went pro at kona and going from two two years before being an age group champ, like the overall amateur champion, to then taking second in the pros, that's just amazing. So, um, I guess we'll see you for North American World Championships. And that's us. Talk to you guys later.